Hey everyone, I'm Eric, also known as EMC150, or just EMC for short. And welcome back to another episode of Legacy of Cain and Soul Reaver 2. We made our way into uh, Yano Soldrin's retreat uh, at the end of yesterday's episode. Yeah, yesterday's. Wow. Last episode, because it probably wasn't yesterday, it was probably two days ago. And I don't know which way I'm actually supposed to go right now. This place is fairly simple in concept. It really just takes uh, some attention, paying attention as to where you're going and what you're, what's available to you and, and whatnot. Um, hmm. That is definitely going to be something afterwards. Uh, I don't think it matters which staircase I actually went up to begin with. Uh, no, no, it does not. Clearly, does not. All right. So why do we need that, the Dark Reaver down there, uh, exactly? I'm not 100% sure at the moment. Oh, okay. I actually understand now. Yeah, I, I do understand. All right, so we're gonna go. We're gonna go grab the uh, the Wind Reaver. because we are going to need this. We are going to need that thing that the eye is guarding to, uh, uh, to, to use to fill that thing up. The, that big goblet, uh, or chub brazier, or whatever it is. So we're gonna have to use the air reaver to make a hole, because we're gonna have to get the dark reaver from outside. That's, uh, that's the point to all of this. Yeah, that is the point to all of this. And you know, now that I remember that, I could have done that uh, last episode and and basically started here. But uh, oh well. Oh, would you frick? We are now getting to the point where the enemies just spam the attacks. Oh my god, that was uh, okay. That, god, come on, thank you. That was all me just sucking. I'm not gonna. There is no excuse. Oh my god! That was entirely all me sucking. I was mistiming my uh, my dodges. And uh, yeah. And so right up here is where we're gonna get the Dark Reaver. So right up here is where we're going. Whoa! Hi. Why did I go up that way? That was kind of really kind of weird. What are you running on? Oh, of course I would knock him onto the ledge and not off. Ow! Oh, come on. Thank you. The sad thing is I think I might actually be able to duck those thrusts. I could very well be wrong. But I've never been good at, uh, at dodging, uh, at, like, dodging through ducking. So I usually just avoid it. Although those are attacks that could easily be blocked, so why I wasn't blocking them is, is also beyond me. To be honest, I actually forget you can block in this game because I do it so fr so uh, so seldomly. All right. Well, now that we have the Dark Reaver, there we go. I also realize I don't think I've ever explained that. I don't, and I think I went through the tutorial for it uh, faster than it uh, people would have been able to read. But uh, you know, here we are, like 11, 11 episodes in. Yeah, like 11 episodes in. In order to use your telekinesis in this, you actually have to hold uh, R2 to bring up your uh, your manual aim, and then you can use it from there. It's the same way you would throw weapons. Which is a change from uh, the previous game. 
So I honestly don't even remember if I mentioned that earlier or not. If I did, I'm reiterating. If not, well, you know, this is probably like 10 episodes too late for that, but whatever. And I really like the effects in here. Like, remember guys, this is this is a, a stuttering, you know, YouTuber. Uh, <laughs> this is a PS2 game. And although it may not look so amazing now, this was done in 2001 on the PlayStation 2, and as far as I'm concerned, even nowadays, like this is this is still fairly impressive. So uh, I I really like what the what the guys that on this uh, were able to do. I think it was it's done by Eidos. Well, that was the company that published it. Uh, Chris, I want to say Crystal Dynamics uh, did the first game. I don't know if they did this one. The mountain's interior was hollow, I discovered, and graced with soaring architecture unique to its creators. As with the outer facade, these balconies and galleries could only be reached by those gifted with flight. With only my ruined wings to carry me, this towering labyrinth seemed impassable. Well, the object of my quest lay just beyond my grasp. For here, suspended at the apex of the chamber, was the threshold that surely led to the great vampire himself. I didn't know whether Janos Audrin was the monster depicted in the stronghold, or one of the noble creatures memorialized among the ruins of the ancient vampires. But I didn't care. Demon or angel, he alone held the key to my destiny. And here we go. This begins a long, arduous journey up to a tower that could have been so much easier if Cain didn't rip the bones out of our wings at the start of the last game. <laughs> what a dick. And so this entire uh, setup here is going to be basically the same uh, as what we just saw. We're ba we have to f get a chalice, fill it up with that. Um, I, I don't even know what to call that. Probably blood, because this is a vampire's uh, place. And uh, put it in an empty one to uh, make the path ahead uh, open. And I'm getting turned around already. I saw something that I needed. That I needed to hit. Oh, that's what I saw. I saw that. So I need to be standing on that... Uh, all right, I need to be standing over here. Yeah. All right, so that opened that. Um, yeah, okay. I, I don't know why I thought that this was leading somewhere. I am, especially since I just jumped through here, that's terrible on my part. Now that this is open... We can actually, uh... Well, we'll be using it. Because we need, uh... We need to fill up that, uh, chalice, or goblet, or whatever you want to call it. And bring it over that way. So it doesn't matter which one you grab. There's one on the opposite side of this. Uh, it mean, means no... It, it's exactly the same thing. And clearly those paths needed to be open because how else would we get around here with uh, without gliding, so... If that wasn't already pretty evident. Oh, well, Wind Reaver. This is actually what you call, or what you call, it's a good example of good level design. 
Because now that we finished this, we're getting a shortcut opened up to us. So now, all we have to do is grab the Air Reaver and activate that, and we can get back up here quickly. I'm actually trying this out because I don't remember if this uh, stays active uh, for a limited time or indefinitely once you hit it. I think it might only be for a limited amount of time, but uh, that will be a, short, a quick way to, to get up later. Oh, wait a second. Oh, actually, you know what? We needed the Wind Reaver anyway, so there we go. Alright, so we're going to need the Light Reaver again. Is there any other places that I'm going to have to destroy like that? I don't think there will be any more that I need like, to do that to. Uh, that is not safe to go by. Yeah, so it would have been just those two, okay. Oh, and that seems to still be going, so yeah, that must stay until, uh, until, like, a, a loading change or something. Alright. As you can see, if you look up a little higher, they're getting a little a little more Trixies with their uh, uh, with their uh, well puzzle thing for that. You have to time it properly. Are you going to? No, you're not going to do that. So actually, stupidly, I got stuck here before, trying to figure out what to do next. And yeah, it's as literally as simple as this. Every single time I play through here and I get stuck there, which actually happens so far every single time I play through this game except for now, because I still remember it from last time, I got stuck there and felt like such an idiot when I inevitably looked it up online and realized that was the solution. Anybody else ever have a moment like that? A nice little shortcut now there. And clearly that's where they want us to go next. However, before we get the Dark Reaver, I'm actually going to drop back down and activate this uh, shortcut. Just in case I uh, screw up. Because let's face it, it's me. <laughs> And yeah, I went the wrong direction. This time I saw the eye on my approach, I was paying attention. The first time uh, this time, like, uh, like in this episode, I actually didn't see it there. I just knew it was there. So that can definitely catch you off guard if you're not paying attention.
And so now that this path is open, we take one of those chalices or goblets things or whatever they're called. I'm just going to call them chalices. I say that, but the next time I refer to them, I might just call them goblins. Yep, goblins. We're going to go grab a goblin, fill it full of blood, pour it out into that, and this sounds like something entirely different. <laughs> oh my god. I'm just going to go fill it up over here, because I'm right here. Love the clipping there. Giant goblin full of blood cl clipping through the stairs, and my feet actually, now that I'm seeing myself as I'm running, my knees are totally clipping through that. This is now a goblin, guys. It, this, is, this is now a fact. It's canon. These are goblins. <laughs> Alright, I got no shortcut there. Then again, I don't, there's no reason to have a shortcut there, come to think of it. I... I'm gonna need the Light Reaver, aren't I? Yeah, I'm gonna need the Light Reaver. Is there anything over here that I can get right now with the Dark Reaver? No, it doesn't look like it. Alright, I'm gonna go grab the Dark... The, I'm gonna grab the Light Reaver, because that's what I'm actually meaning to say. And these weather shortcuts are good. I need the Air Reaver. Damn it. I wasn't paying attention. Um, okay, I just got stuck on nothing. Thank you, game. Or at least to me, it looked like I just got stuck on nothing. Oh my god. I need the Air Reaver for this. Then I'm probably have to go right back down and get the Light Reaver. Go back up with the Light Reaver. Ugh. And I'm going the wrong direction, because I want to be going this way. This is why I said at the beginning here, this is not very difficult, it's you just need to pay attention. I did not pay attention, because that is very clearly the Wind Reaver symbol. Yeah, of course, now I need to go back down for the Light Reaver. Well, that's why these shortcuts are here. <laughs> Makes it much less of a pain to get back up. Oh, come on. Alright, now that I have the right... Uh, the, the right reaver for the job. Oh my god. Whoa. Alright, game. I was holding R2 when I hit triangle. Uh, that should have been... The projectile. Not... Uh, a spin slash. Even the game is trying to screw me up now. Oh, look at you. Somebody thinks he's important. That's done. Now... Do I... Do I need to grab one of those and fill it up now? Is that what I'm supposed to do? Am 
Alright, let's do this while I'm here. Yeah, you have to time it so it flashes when they're side by side or like back uh, parallel is what I'm trying to say. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see. I'm pretty sure I needed to do that before I grabbed uh, and filled one of these up because I'm pretty sure I need to bring these one of these things into uh, into that room after it's full that is although I have no idea what what place I actually just opened okay no actually I don't need that yet that's right. We go this way first. We need to fill this up. But in order to do that, we need to get over here first. Or maybe we need to, yeah, we need to fill this one up as well. Um, Raziel? What, what, what the hell? Why are you not facing the enemy? I am auto-targeting. And if you're wondering why sometimes the souls come out at a, as a different color and heal less, it's... Most likely because if you damage them with a the soul river, it, it kind of uh, diminishes the amount of health they restore. And the color of the soul also uh, uh, is an indicator for how much it'll heal you. The brighter it is, uh, like the more green and bright it is, then uh, the more it will heal when you, uh, when you consume it. Okay, so let's go fill this up and finish this uh, finish this puzzle area. Cause yeah, we're at like 20 minutes now, 22, 23, something like that. This is why I didn't want to do this at the at the end of the last episode there, cause I knew. the game telling us we need uh, to fill that one up but what happened to the chalice in my hand like seriously why did that have to vanish I could have just filled it up and went like why do that game why make me run back needlessly because that's the only point to this however I am going to go back at the air reaver and uh, open that last shortcut just because I apparently want to open that shortcut done.
Here we go. What is behind door number one? Janus Audrin. It is heartening after all these years to hear my name spoken without contempt. Razia? My child, what have they done to you? I have been dragged through hell and back. All it seems to reach this moment. But I don't yet know why. For thousands of years I have waited alone here. Losing faith. At the time of the binding, nine guardians were called to serve the pillars, and I was summoned as the tenth guardian, the keeper of the reaver, the weapon of our salvation. Over time, our race died out until I alone remained, sustained only by my obligation to you and by my guardianship of the blade. And the other nine? Why did their guardianship not sustain them? I don't know. As our race dwindled, the humans prospered. I have watched over the centuries as our history faded into myth and finally receded altogether. The humans have forgotten us entirely and claimed the pillars for themselves, wholly ignorant of their true purpose. To them, I am merely a devil the origin of their vampire plague. Why would the Pillars summon human guardians then, if they are meant to be served by vampires? The Pillars choose their guardians from birth, Raziel. And vampires are no longer born. This is the crux of our dilemma. And this is the terrible irony. With their vampire purge, the members of the Circle have assaulted the very architects of the pillars they are sworn to protect. They have embarked on a treacherous path. With every vampire they kill, the humans are slitting their own throats. They know I'm up here, beyond their reach, and it terrifies them. You can see how they flaunt their kills to torment me. Or perhaps simply to lure me out. They have this foolish notion that destroying me will somehow topple our entire bloodline. <laughs> Thankfully, we're not that fragile. I have seen them mustering their forces in the village below. Yes. I don't know what they're plotting, but I fear our time may be bitterly short. Mankind seems to have brought you only torment and grief. You must hate them. They fear what they don't understand, and they despise what they fear. But no, I do not hate them. Vorador does. Mm, he has suffered much. He cannot forgive them. Should they be forgiven? They don't understand what they're doing. They are simply unenlightened and vulnerable to manipulation. So, it's all true then, what Cain and Vorador have told me. I really am some kind of unholy vampire messiah. Unholy? No. Messiah, perhaps. I don't like that word. It smells of martyrdom. Raziel. Your role in this world's destiny is more crucial and more benevolent than you've allowed yourself to believe. Your journey will not be easy, 
dark powers are allied against you. But I think you already know this. You appear to have been cruelly tested. The binding must be secured, Razia. The pillars are the lock. And the reaver is the key. Yes. The reaver is here. Why do I feel nothing? The most formidable weapon ever forged by our swordsmiths. They infused the blade with vampiric energy, empowering the Reaver to drain our enemies of their precious lifeblood. As Janos presented the blade, an inexplicable sense of dread crept over me, more palpable than anything I'd felt before. I was at once horribly repelled by the sword, and yet irresistibly compelled to touch it, to take it up. Please. Take it away from me. I fear you have been followed. You must save yourself, Raziel. Janos! No! My surroundings whirled sickeningly, and I found myself transported safely away from the ambush to an adjacent chamber. Janos had delivered me from the Saraphan, selflessly forfeiting his own safety to preserve my life. And now I feared that my newfound mentor would be slaughtered by the very crusaders I had so recently revered. The irony pierced me, and with dawning horror, I realized that I had been duped by Mobius from the beginning, for the Seraphim had simply followed the path I gullibly blazed through this sanctuary, and had arrived bearing Mobius' staff. Thus armed, they had Janos at their mercy. Through the door, I could hear them battling, less than a dozen paces away. It may as well have been a thousand miles, but this barrier was sealed by elemental forces I did not possess. It seemed Janos had conveyed me into the heart of the Fire Shrine. I thought perhaps if I could galvanize the forge and imbue the Reaver in time, I might have a slim chance of saving Janos from his grisly fate. So here we have another plot dump, and I gotta say, this is where the story really starts to come around. <laughs> wow. Um, we're also over half an hour, and I didn't exactly want this to, to go on as long as it has, but I didn't want to, uh, to end this episode before that cutscene, simply because, uh, well, that's a little too much of a tease. <laughs> so anyway, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. And hopefully you'll come back and join me next time to see uh, what, uh, well, what specifically becomes of Vianos. Until then, take care, you hear?